Keep in mind, I'd never even considered giving a ride to a stranger before. All my life I'd been told that's how you get killed. Only crazies hitchhike, they'd say. They'll cut your throat and seal your car and you'll be dead in a ditch. I didn't want to die in a ditch, and I like my car. But after I left the gas station and I saw the poor guy sitting in the gutter on the I-95 on-ramp, feebly holding out his thumb, I made my choice. I'd be a good Samaritan. The storm in the distance looked pretty threatening. If I let that guy sit there, he'd have to bear the brunt of it. From the looks of him, he didn't appear to be able to bear much at all. I pulled over to the side and rolled down the window. Where are you looking to go? I asked him. Baltimore, he replied. His voice was stronger than his sickly body had suggested, and that gave me pause. I looked him over again, dirty jeans, baggy red t-shirt, no bag, no bulgers in his pocket. I sighed. I can get you as far as Philly. He nodded. Hop in, I told him, unlocking the door. In he hopped. I'm Colin, I said. Frank, he replied in a low voice. We didn't talk much for the first few miles, aside from me asking him if he wanted some of the Fritos I had left from my lunch stop in Rhode Island. He took them and crunched away as I drove. He caught me studying him out of the corner of my eye a few times, but he didn't say anything. As the miles ticked away and the rain started hitting the windshield, Frank fell asleep. The open bag of Fritos was on his lap. I wanted a couple, but I didn't want him to wake up thinking I was trying to grab his dick. I absolutely had no interest in his dick. Frank snored like an orgasming Pratt in a Whitney jet engine. In the confines of the car, since I had to close the windows once the rain had started, I noticed Frank had an unpleasant odor. Nothing overwhelming, but still it was obvious. Over his snore, his stomach growled and burbled. Gross, I thought. Lightning flashed and wind buffeted the side of the car. The traffic ahead of us slowed to a crawl. One of the annoying things about my car is the climate control only works properly when the car is moving. God knows why. The air conditioning we were enjoying up to that point cut out, and hot air started blowing out of the vents. The windshield began to fog up. I cracked my window, hoping the outside air might clear the windshield. It did a bit, but visibility was terrible. The rain was heavy and my wipers weren't doing a good job. All I could see was the fog and the brake lights of the car stopped in front of me. Frank's stomach kept gurgling. I looked over. He was awake. He was staring straight ahead. You okay, buddy? I asked. No response. He just stared at the fog-shrouded glass of the windshield. The smell I had noticed had become more intensified. Still nothing. Thick, humid air poured from the car's vents, despite the AC being set to max. Rain and small chunks of hail pelted the choked highway. Frank retched. Shit, I said. I frantically reached into the back seat for a bag or bucket or anything that might catch what I thought was about to come out, blasting out of my companion. My hand settled on one of the canvas shopping bags I use at Whole Foods. God damn it, I mumbled as I placed my favorite shopping bag in Frank's lap. He moaned and turned to look at me, his eyes swimming back and forth with what I knew had to be intense nausea. Frank, please open the door and puke on the road or at least use the bag, I'm begging you. More silence punctuated by gurgling and retching. A boom of thunder caused us both to jump. For Frank, that was all it took. He didn't open the door and he didn't even aim for the bag. A heavy wave of yellow vomit exploded out of his mouth and splashed against the windshield. I screamed. Another projectile torrent erupted from the man, dousing the ceiling, the dashboard, and the center console. Get out! I shrieked, the smell of the stomach contents invading my nose and threatening to force my own contribution to the mess. Frank sat back with his head down, hasty slime drooling from his mouth into the Fritos bag on his lap. Cars behind me were leaning on their horns. The traffic in front of us had cleared. I poked the hideousness on the console to turn my emergency blinkers on, then steered into the median. On my right, I heard Frank choking. I got out of the car and stood in the rain, watching him. 
If you told me the following 30 seconds actually lasted 3 hours, I would have told you you were way off. It felt like a day. Frank's throat bulged as something was forced up into his mouth. I saw the something a second later. A colossal, writhing centipede as thick as my wrist began slagging out. Its passage eased by the vile lubrication from minutes before. Inch after inch, foot after foot, crawled out until it was free. It skittered under the passenger seat. I had already dialed the 9 in 911 when the solid matter in his vomit began to move. Frank groaned and I distinctly heard him mutter, not again. As the rain soaked me, I watched the small centipedes crawl through the sludge all over the car, leaving trails as they went. My dialing complete, I waited through seven rings before the dispatcher answered. I told her about the medical emergency and tried to estimate where we were on the interstate, but Frank abruptly opened the passenger side door and stood on the side of the highway. He was gripping another massive centipede and pulling it out of his throat. I watched it bite his hand over and over until its two-foot length was exposed. Frank flung it into the dirt. Sorry about your car, man. Frank called over the sound of the rain and traffic. I haven't had an episode since I was a kid. I was speechless. I just looked at him as he walked down the side of the median, the torrential rain washing his clothes of the filth and bugs. And as centipedes crawled throughout my car and ropes of stomach contents dripped from the ceiling, he stuck out his thumb to flag down another potential ride to Baltimore. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. Be sure to tune in next time. Until then, peace out!